Welcome everybody to another video of Vinyl Addict. This is Chili and I have the Cult album from 1994, the reissue today. And before I get into this, please don't forget to hit the like button, the comment, comment on this video, share this video, and if you still haven't, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for updates. Okay, so with that out of the way, yes, it's a uh, long, uh, long waited for this uh, reissue of the 1994 album. This is their self-titled sixth album produced by Bob Rock. And this is the Beggar's Archive, pressed on classic black vinyl. Okay, so this is the album which was, um, it was the follow-up to Ceremony, which came out in 1991. And that album was somewhat uh, a disappointment uh, as far as the cult catalog is concerned. It was following the highly successful bombastic Sonic Temple, which I think was one of their best albums. And it was sort of like <clears throat> Sonic Temple without the atmospheric and you know the element that has the you know love era into it you know so sonic temple had like it was a mix between uh electric and love and ceremony is just still that kind of blues bass heavy rock but without the sonic temple kind of atmospheric cool kind of cerebral stuff you know, and there was some acoustic music on there and, you know, it didn't have Jamie Stewart and it just was an album that they had some cool songs on there, some cool acoustic numbers, but it was a Billy and Ian's kind of darkest period. However, I mean, even in their darkest period, their, their worst albums are better than most people's best albums. All right. So um, this one, though which came out in 94, which I felt was way better than that album. This is more into the alternative rock. And there's, you know, some noise rock. It's been called noise rocks. The stuff that Billy is doing on here is a lot different. He's coming um, from a more of that kind of European approach to his guitar playing again. Um, but they are recording with Bob Rock in Canada still. Um, now they have two new members on this one. It was Craig Adams from the Mission UK on bass and Scott Gareth and uh, on drums. And that, you know, that was probably one of the best rhythm sections the cult ever had. Um, they, you know, done a lot of um, kinds of things with their, their rhythm section kind of um, on a lot of these songs gave Billy Duffy a, a lot of opportunities to do things that he wouldn't be able to do in like the last album, you know, and um, they opened up a lot of space for him. And so he did some layerings and he did some kind of textures on here, like on the song Coming Down. Um, however, the whole album is, is still kind of like a smorgasbord of different kinds of things and directions and ideas that they never really done before only i'd say like 10 percent sounds kind of familiar like coming uh, not coming down but gone the opening track is kind of a heavy rock kind of that zeppelin thing that you know they were kind of doing in their previous albums um but with a new twist um <clears throat> songs like um real girl so side one is gone Coming Down, which was the lead and single, Drug Tongue, uh, and Real Girl. And Real Girl is very, just very alt-rock, you know, for that time. Um, side 2 was Black Sun, Naturally High, and Joy. Black Sun sounds very kind of, um, you know, they, they're kind of throwing in elements of grunge rock in here. And that, that kind of has it, but it still has a cult feel to it. Um, <clears throat> But it's also lyrically, you know, there are some themes on here which uh, Ian never explored before. A lot of it personal, and this one is about child abuse. Uh, side three, we had Star, Sacred Life, and Be Free. Now, Sacred Life uh, is a song I could do without. It was kind of a, like him paying tribute. It's a slow number paying tribute to like people in this generation who has passed on through drugs or, um, you know, just kind of having reckless kind of, um, 
uh, lifestyles, Kurt Cobain, Rivers, um, River Phoenix, the actor at the time. So it doesn't, it doesn't really age well in that sense. You know, um, he's talking about also Abby Hoffman, the sixties guy, a uh, protest guy. And so, um, it, it doesn't, yeah, it, it, it sort of just, um, uh, dates it to, to, to people that are not, not, not that they're not relevant, but it's sort of just, um, if, if you were just to pick up on the cult in this generation and start listening to them, I mean, he's talking about people like, uh, doesn't really concern you or, you know, they, they haven't really made an impact in your life because uh, it was sort of, um, other than like someone like Kurt Cobain, of course, but like Rivers, River Phoenix movies or something like that, that's kind of, you know, just stuff in that time of 94, nine, the early 90s and stuff. And so... I don't know, it just it just didn't do it for me. Be Free, I thought was a great track. I love the guitar um, riff on there. And it's, it has a lot of muscle to it. I mean, it really sounds like a Gibson Les Paul, you know? And side four is Universal You, Emperor's New Clo uh, Horse, and Saints Are Down. Now these songs, I mean, it, it this, Pressing this reissue sounds really good. It sounds better than the previous one, I feel, and the CD and everything. It's just like it, the guitars are so much brighter. I would have to say that it is a little um, hot on the higher end, um, but I think that was somewhat um, even on the uh, the previous um, pressings and and. Uh, the way it sounds, but I think it, it more so on here. But there are some things that he, I I'm picking up that I wasn't able to hear in the original ones. Um, I feel Saints Are Down uh, is probably the second best album closing track the Cult has done. I would have to say the first one, of course, is Black Angel from the Love album, but this one is really good. So um, the only song I really had an issue with was Sacred Life. I, I could have done um, without that one, but all in all, this album is, is superb. And so <clears throat> let's look at the records here. And so this is side one, which has C. Side two is U, so it's gonna spell out cult, of course. And there's just, you know, all the lyrics on here and just um, sporadic art, you know. And here's the L, side three and side four is side T. And here was a picture of them at the time. Now, this is at 94, of course, Ian cut off his um, long black mane of hair we, you know um, who would have thought that would have happened but you know it was at that time you know i started in the 90s with um you know like u2 cut their hair right and then metallica cut their hair and oh well i think this one came out before metallica yeah but metallica cut their hairs i mean um chris cornell cut his hair so it was a time where rock stars were cutting off their hair and um I don't know. It, it was just like I, th I thought Ian would, uh, he'd always look cooler with the long black hair. I think the Sonic Temple kind of thing he got going right there with the hat, you know, with the, you know, um, the skull, that was cool, you know. Um, however, the music and the, the whole presentation of this, the packaging, the way they were looking, it, it you know, it went with it. You know, because it's a new sound, of course, and, and they needed a fresh start. But this would be the song, the album where they would break up and we wouldn't see anything from the cult until they would regroup, thanks to Matt Sorum. And uh, I saw them on the 1999 Cult Rising Tour where they just got back together and he had, at that time, had grown out his hair, uh, Ian, and then they would, you know, release another album um, with the, which is Beyond Good and Evil, which hasn't seen the light of day on vinyl, so still waiting on that. But at least today, May 12, 2023, we have 
The Cult, 1994's day, um, uh, self-titled, also known as Black Sheep. I love this album. Tell me what your comments are, what are your thoughts. And with that, I'll shut up and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.